I'm about to do something I haven't done on this channel in years, and I don't think I've ever really done it properly. And I wanted to actually review a distribution from Linux. And this is something that I might do, depending on what you guys think. Hit the thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. And I wanted to look at it from a perspective of what's actually comprising these desktops from the foundational level. I don't really care about desktop environments and many distribution reviews I see on YouTube is just cringe because I'm like, all you're doing is re reviewing the desktop environment, not even what makes up uh, the Linux distribution. So this video, I wanted to kind of just do a broad overview of Fedora versus Arch versus Debian and understand all three, because you see me bouncing back and forth between Arch and Debian. And if you're not familiar, Arch is like, there's so many derivatives, Manjaro, Endeavor OS, all these, um, pretty much for, for my sake, I think of them the exact same. They're all Arch because that's what they're based on. Pretty much all the commits go through Arch. It's just it's Arch. And then on Debian, you have like Ubuntu, KDE Neon, uh, you name it, Deepin, in, in, yeah, Elementary OS. There's so many different Linux distributions, Linux Mint. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing some major ones that people use, uh, but all those are Debian. So you have Debian, you have Arch, and those are really the only two I've really kind of gone back and forth. But I keep fighting with myself because I get over on Debian, I'm like, ah, oh, man, I really want newer packages and I want to get on like more of the bleeding edge. And then I get on the bleeding edge, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is nice. And having the AUR auto build stuff's convenient. But at the end of the day, it's just a little bit too rough around the edges. I, I like that stable experience from Debian. Then I go back and forth and I just kind of fight with myself like a, a two-faced monster. And I want to stop that today because then there's Fedora, which was one of the original desktop environments I tried. Actually, I think it was the very first Linux desktop uh, I ever tried to daily drive. And I just didn't know enough about Linux desktop uh, at that time to really make use of it properly. And, you know, I, I knew a lot about Linux server, but not Linux desktop. So now that I have a huge, vast array of experience going between all these different distributions, here's my thoughts on Fedora Linux versus pretty much everything else, because Fedora is a beautiful blend of Debian and Arch. It's more rolling, so you have a more up-to-date kernel. It has newer packages than Debian, but not so bleeding edge that uh, you, you get breakage and it doesn't move quite as fast as Arch, but close enough that you get a more stable experience, but not at the cost of really missing out on much. The only thing that Arch has really going for it over Fedora, I think, is AUR, and I really don't even like the AUR because I like to build my own packages and do all that myself, as AUR is just, you know, run by neckbeards and occasionally you get a really bad commit in there and uh, that's just gonna break your system and that's why i don't really like it uh where fedora i know i could have a very very stable experience all the time and get the best of both worlds so let's review real fast uh arch and what i like because arch is an amazing system and if we look uh arch has many different things also by the way i'm using obsidian notes uh, this is actually my first or second day of using it, and I think it might be my new favorite program. So video coming soon on that. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. On Arch, I will say this is a rolling release, which basically means you get the most up-to-date kernels. So if you want the latest kernel commit, Arch has it. Uh, latest Linux kernels. And that's pretty awesome. I love that about Arch. It also has the AUR, which I just alluded to. This is a community build kit. And the build kit uh, from the AUR basically says, hey, uh, I'm gonna build this project for you with this script that I've created and uploaded to the AUR, Arch user repository, what it, is, what it means. However, this is flawed. Sometimes packages aren't updated or bad updates happen. This is why you shouldn't really use the AUR. Now, it also uses what it, what really defines a distribution is its package manager. How, how do you install programs? How does the system update? Package manager is huge, and this one uses Pac-Man. And Pac-Man has some really funky syntax. It's an okay, I mean, almost every Linux package manager is good in its own right, but Pac-Man's syntax is funky like you'll you'll do like uh syu to update the database and your system uh, and upgrade it 
or you might do like a pacman s uh, git to install git uh, you might do a pacman dash q to query in or a q lowercase i to query and get information it, there's all these weird syntax uh funky syntax uh, it works you just got to know a little bit about it to make it going but uh it's not necessarily bad but i wouldn't call it very good either it's just traditional so that's really what makes the foundation of these distributions. Now, a lot of people are like, well, what does Arch look like? And I'm like, well, it can look like anything. Debian can look like anything. Uh, I don't really care about how it looks because what you're seeing on the screen is what I like. And I put Arch looks like this, Debian looks like this, and now Fedora looks like this because I can control everything down to the nuts and bolts, every little thing that gets in this operating system. That's why my operating systems pretty much look the same. Going forward, it's going to probably be a variation of this as I keep tweaking. And eventually, I'm going to release this project, and it's going to be fantastic. But let's let's keep going with our distro review here. And next, we're going to go into Debian, Ubuntu, uh, Linux Mint. Pretty much all of them are, 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 are this. And they these are stable releases for the most part. Typically, these will run 6 to 24 months behind, uh, which means those the Linux kernel runs pretty far behind, but it's tested. You're not going to get a whole bunch of really bad commits, and it works really, really well. Uh, even some RHEL-based servers like I've used back in the day, like CentOS 6 and CentOS 7, were good. Rocky Linux, Alma Linux... All these are, are rail-based servers, and they will run upwards of five years behind. Sometimes, in some instances, some sysadmins will be running a 10-year-old kernel. So don't think that it's 6 to 12, uh, 24 months behind is a really that bad of a thing. It really isn't. But if you have bleeding he edge hardware, like you go out and buy the uh, AMD graphics card on the day of release... You're going to want a rolling release because that's not going to work on one of these old kernels because back when these kernels were created... That hardware didn't even exist. So that's where stable releases fall short, is bleeding edge hardware. And uh, most instances, a stable and rolling kernel, I don't really care because most of my hardware is about two plus years old. So between Arch and Debian, these, this is not a deal breaker. However, it does use apt, which is the most common package manager. Meaning it, it's the most easy to understand. Most instructions are like uh, apt install git, apt purge git. You can do apt find and and then or search whatever it might be uh, to to get your package of choice. So really easy to grasp, but it is old. So the apt is is very old, long in the tooth. Some commits. Uh, I remember probably one of the most famous bugs of apt I've seen in recent years is when uh, you saw Linus use Pop OS and he did an apt upgrade. And because of some package being uh, his his system wasn't up to date, and since he was trying to install Steam, it wiped out his whole system when he did an apt upgrade. And that was because the Pop OS team had a special version of apt that wasn't properly patched and, or you know not enough. You know, obviously, quality control went into it. So it, it really messed things up bad. And that's kind of a limitation of apt uh, that sometimes it, it, these old things that you retrofit for years and years, it's just maybe not the best, but it's old. It's reliable for the most part, unless you have like Pop OS messing things up. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty easy syntax. So overall, I like apt a little bit better than Pac-Man, uh, but at the same time, it's not my favorite package manager uh, because of its age. And, and both of Pac-Man and apt don't do something called differential updates. Usually they're downloading the entire package, even if it's just an update, where some of the newer package managers that we're about to get into with Fedora do differential updates, meaning they don't have to grab the entire thing. They can just grab the difference and install it. So it's less download, less, less downtime, and it's a, a faster upgrade process. So that brings us to Fedora. Oh man, I absolutely love Fedora, mainly because you get a rolling release, which gives you the latest kernels. Pretty awesome. So you get uh, more newer hardware. It's not quite as bleeding edge as Arch. So if you have something the day of release, you're probably still better served on Arch, but it's still rolling. So you get pretty up-to-date stuff. Usually this lags maybe a month or two behind uh, Arch. So not, not very far behind at all. And then... Uh, it uses DNF or denitrified yum. It used to use yum of old, 
uh, which yum of old wasn't very good. You can still use the yum command to install, uh, but usually that just translates it to DNF. It, it's not really that big of a deal, but DNF's usually what is used on all new rel based systems such as Fedora. And it is an amazing package manager. DNF install, DNF remove, DNF search, very easy syntax to learn. Differential update, so it's a better, more efficient one. And uh, overall, I like Fedora's package manager than Arch and Debian, which the package manager to me is what makes and breaks a distribution. It is the fundamental thing that makes it awesome or, or it can make it fail. So it just, uh, it matters at such a high level that if you don't have a very good package manager, it can spell disaster for you down the road. So I know DNF's a solid one and, and probably one of my favorite of all time, if not my favorite today. Yum, back in the day with like CentOS 6 was uh, definitely a yum. Even, even some of CentOS 7, I know with yum, it was uh, a little bit troublesome. It wasn't very good with dependency resolution where apt and pacman were, were are very good with dependency resolution, which basically means when you go to do like a, a DNF install steam, sometimes it would be like, oh, I can't do that because you didn't enable, uh, you know, 32 bit infrastructure, or I couldn't do that because you don't have this dependency. DNF is very good at dependency resolution and just doing like a DNF install steam works great right out of the box with Fedora. So uh, kudos to them and their package manager. And probably the last thing about Fedora is it is based on RHEL. And, and I consider this the best because it is the most secure out of pretty much any Linux distribution. Uh, Debian and Arch, the more bleeding edge something is typically the more, you know, issues you run into. Uh, I know Debian, there was an article about this. Debian's had about 3000 exploits over 20 years of time. I mean, it's still nothing compared to Windows. You know, Windows is outrageous as far as the exploits you get there, but it's still a pretty high number. Arch, I'm not sure. Nobody really uses Arch for, for security or business. So it's more of a hobbyist uh, distribution where Fedora is based on RHEL. And this is what you see more in business because Red Hat Enterprise Linux has only had in the last 20 years, I think around a thousand exploits. So Fedora, I, I find is based on, on something a little bit better than, than Debian. Also, the team is a little bit bigger because it has Red Hat behind it compared to a Debian uh, system. So those are the things I love about the operating systems, but let's actually dive into what I've done here and kind of where I'm going, just so you get an idea or a feel. Now, this entire uh, mainframe here, this, this entire thing, what I'm using program-wise is BSPWM for the top portion, and then I'm using Kitty for my terminal, so I can launch multiple kernels or, or terminals here if I want, and that works pretty darn well. Uh, and then I use workspaces up here at the top. You can see me kind of flip between them. That's done with just a mod key or Windows key and then the number. I use Brave for my browser. Uh, and then I have just some other different things like GitHub desktops, how I manage all my projects. So I usually do this on every single system. This is how I set it up. I've switched out and added a, a taskbar up here in the top right, uh, start menu or the actual power down menu. I've made this type of setup. This is all based on the genome or, or genome project uh, that was a huge success uh, as far as aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, pretty heavily modified these days as I've changed a lot of different aspects of it. But overall, the, the spirit of this was, uh, this is more of the spiritual successor that I've been kind of building out uh, for this monitor and, and doing it. And with that, I've run into a lot of bugs and other things. I don't know if this will ever be ready for the masses, uh, but I think it will be. And I think I will base it on Fedora based on everything you now know about these operating systems that uh, I really, really enjoy. Like when I'm flipping through here and I have my, my operating systems and I, I pull them up, I absolutely have been enjoying my time in Fedora immensely. It's not to say next week it's not something different. Heck, I still use Windows and Mac and a whole bunch of other different things. I'm just curious to see what ends up happening 
with uh, this build. I, if it does ever become mainstream, I'm gonna make a video specifically about how I build this block by block and then try and document as much as that. And I'm gonna try and do that on my live streams on Friday, probably for this next month. It's gonna be kind of dedicated to building up uh, this specific uh, desktop because I've really, really enjoyed uh, the synergy I get and, and everything, it kind of has come full circle. And at the end of the day, what I'm looking to do is make a desktop that is completely the way I want it. Every single little piece, every single little nook and cranny is exactly the way I want it designed. And uh, I know a lot about this specific one. And that's kind of where I'm at with this specific uh, layout. If you do interested in this, again, uh, I have a very, very rough draft on the Debian project, which I need to update as well. And you can do tiling, like we have regular tiling, but you can actually go full screen with this. Uh, you can do tile mode. You can do split screen. There's a lot of other different modes you can actually put this in and usually it's notated right here this is tile mode then when you go full screen mode that actually switches to a different icon in the back that you can't quite see uh, but i i really kind of wanted to show this as a base system and kind of compare fedora and maybe you get a better understanding between arch and, and debian based systems and maybe linux as a whole now and if you're interested, this is more of an advanced video, but uh, I definitely would like to do a full-blown, hey, uh, Windows to Linux tutorial again, because it's been many years since my last one. Uh, but this is one that I feel like I'm really closing in on my perfect system and something that I really have enjoyed immensely. And uh, I will continue building it and we'll see if it ever ends up in mainstream, but I don't think it will. I think this is gonna be more for your advanced users as as there's certain things I just don't know if we'll ever be able to read and tie into a system automatically on install. Uh, but let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. I know this is a little bit of a rambly video, but I wanted to revisit the, the Linux realm and kind of come back and say, hey, this is kind of everything I've been working on. These are the things I've really enjoyed about my time in Linux, certain issues I've had. And uh, one thing I can say to you is I'm always just going to tell you, hey, this is this is what I this is what's happened uh, with my Linux. And uh, I will still continually use all the other operating systems out there as well. It's not the solely thing so I can continually stay up to date, understand what operating systems do what the best. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.